that if you had your life to live over again, you could have done more than what you've done thus far. Raise your hands, please. Very good. When, when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, my original treatment was I had 338 radiation seed implants. And I remember one night I was reflecting on my life when the doctors told me that it was coming back and they did not get it all. And I read some words about by Dr. Howard Thurman and I was thinking about have I lived a life of meaning? Have, you know, have I done the things that would allow me to make impact? Have I done the things that, that I've used all the stuff that God had put in me? Have you ever thought about, are you doing all that you can do? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I was reflecting on. And I was planning on going to sleep, but that night, he, he wrote something that I, I could not go to sleep. Repeat after me, please. Live full. Live, Live full. full. Die empty. Die, Die empty. empty. He said, in the ideal situation for a man, a woman to die. Dr. Howard Thurman was a mentor. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Mahatma Gandhi, and Albert Schweitzer. He wrote, Deep is the Hunger, the Voice of the Genuine. He said, the ideal situation for a man, a woman to die is that family members pray with them as they cross over. He said, but imagine if you will be on your deathbed. And then standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life, but you, for whatever reason, you never pursued those dreams. You never acted on those talents. You never used those gifts. You never wrote that book. We never heard your voice. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying we came to you and only you could have given us life and now we must die with you forever and the question is if you died today what dreams what ideas what books what invention what service, what business will die with you? Miles Monroe, great preacher out of the Bahamas said, the wealthiest place on the planet is not in South Africa where there are diamond mines, is not in, in the other areas of the world where there's oil. He said the wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery. Because there you'll find potential never realize. There you'll find dreams never pursued, books never written, abilities and talents never used. Repeat after me, please. Live full. Live full. Die empty. Die empty. Shake someone's hand on your right and left and say, I'm going to live full. I'm going to live full. I'm going to live full. Look so serious. <laughs> What's your first name? Yeah. You were moved by that? Come on. Maisha, look at this. How did that happen? That I've been at for the last year. I decided I would live full and die empty. When I die, I want to be completely empty. So that really touched me. Woo! Come on. Yeah. How many, of you, how, many of you, how many of you felt that? Raise your hands, please. You felt it. Yes. What, what did you think about it? What, what came up for you? Um, first of all, you have an amazing voice. It connects with my heart. Um, I lost a brother to that he committed suicide. That was in 2010. Okay. 
and I lost a son to cancer um, back in um, 1994. So being alive, being fulfilled, it has been a journey putting in the past what happened. Because we usually grab to the past and we drag it with us. And there's no future in front of us. Because all of that is just so close to us. So I have, in my journey, I have worked to put that behind as something that happened in my life that I lost someone that is part of me, but it doesn't affect who I am and my future. Yeah, come on. Sandra, Sandra, S-A-N-D-R-A. So you lost, okay, hold this minute. Okay, you lost a, your son. And who else? And your brother. Everybody repeat after me, please. Defining moments. Defining Defining moments. moments. You know, as as I look at myself, my name is Sadra. Say hello, Sadra. Hello, Sadra. You know, as I I look at myself and, and as I look at you, here's what I know. That we have all been created on purpose, for a purpose, with a purpose. Yep. Yes, sir. And... And we have an expiration date. I heard someone once say, live each day as if it were your last. Because one day, it will be. be. I lost my brother. And and that that was a life-defining moment. And if that wasn't enough, Next, I lost my son. And what I've come to know that as we look at ourselves, we look at our loved ones and look into the future, that we're all gonna go one day. And the truth of the matter is, I did not lose them. They're not with me physically, but the love that I have for them, the grave nor the casket or death can take that away. Let me share with you what I learned from my brother. Tell me the first quality that you learned. What is your brother's name? Nelson. My brother's name was Nelson. Tell me about his personality. I'm going to do your speech. I'm going to show you. You better get a notepad. I'm, 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 I'm getting the download of it here. I'm going to help you. Yeah. Tell me, just, just give me something about his personality. Nelson was funny, was loving, was generous. Good. Now, I want you to think about what it is that you want to do and, and what's one of the qualities that will allow you to do that. Nelson was funny. He, he had a sense of humor. Uh, he was always making people laugh. And one of the things that we know, Helen Keller had a point. She said, life is short and unpredictable. Eat the dessert first. (laughs) And Nelson believed in eating the dessert first. And then let me tell you about my son, my heart. What is his name? Carlo. Carlo? Carlo. Carlo. And tell me something about him. Carlo. Tell me something you remember most about. Carlo wanted to make his sister smile. I was at this event and Les Brown was speaking. And I told him about my brother and my son making their transition and the qualities most prominent in their personalities that I remember. Because what we have are memories and moments and I want you to shake someone's hand on your right and left and say, create special moments. Create special moments. Create 
as I think about my brother and my son, my message to you is to create special moments with the people that you love. There's a book that has been written called Living a Life of No Regrets. This lady, she worked with people that were in hospice. She was a nurse. And, and she interviewed them to find out if, if you had your life to live over again, what is it that you regret? And one of the things that kept on coming up, they wish they'd spent more time with the people that they love. Many times in pursuit of our dreams, we become so caught up and possessed after gathering things, the people that mean the most to us, we unconsciously forget. Shake someone's hand on your right and left and say, keep the connection, keep the connection. Keep the connection. Keep the connection. So, what I would work with and show you because each time you tell the story and you write this down, you never tell a story without a point. You never make a point without a story. Story, point, action. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I need to talk. I can hook you up. <laughs> Accelerate that healing process. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer? Good, we'll talk. Okay, good. Then my son just came to get me off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to call you up, so we gotta talk. But has this been helpful to you? Yeah! yeah. We love you, Les. I'm like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Mickey Mouse mouse. And I have more than Mickey Mouse in the world, but, but I'm not showing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use your imagination. <laughs> Hello, Lim. How you doing? What's happening, dude? You know, ain't no thing with a chicken wing, all right? <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Les. Yeah.